Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and blessing and amazing day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day to always give him the thanks right now. Another day to always give him the praise right now. Another day to always give him the glory. Another day to always magnify and shout out his holy name. And another day to always serve him. Another day for us to continue to pick up our crosses and continue to follow him. No matter what, pick up your crosses, my sisters. Pick up your cross, my brothers. I know that you're going through some pain. I know that you're going through some suffering. I know that you hurt. I know it seems like it's dark. I know it seems like that God has forgotten about you, but he has not forgotten about you. You continue to follow him anyway. You continue to put your faith and your trust and hope in him anyway. You continue to seek him anyway. Because we serve an awesome God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a wonderful God. We serve a God that's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore, and he never changed his mind, and he will never turn his back against us. We serve a loving and a faithful God. There's nothing that he won't do for neither one of us right now today. The point I'm always making each and every day, but I'm always want to encourage my brothers and sisters to do, not because you want something, not because you're in need of anything, but praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. That's why he is still on the cross and he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day. Yes, he is. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. He is still in the answering prayer business because he is God. And there's nobody like him. There's nobody merciful. There's nobody kind and love and joyful like our God. Praise is what I do. And if you're in love with Jesus, the way that I'm in love with Jesus, and if you're in love with Jesus, the way that you're in love with Jesus, open up your mouth right now today and give him some thanks right now and give him some praise right now in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, I come before you peacefully and humbly right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for this opportunity right now, Father God. Thank you for this chance of a lifetime. I thank you, Heavenly Father God, that you allow myself, my sisters, and my brothers to come together today, Father God, to fellowship in your house, to praise your name in your house, to glorify your name in your house, to always to seek you in your house, God, to always to magnify, shout out your holy name in your house, and always to exalt your holy name in your house. Father God, your house is a house of prayer and praise. God, right now today, that is exactly what we're doing. We are praying in your house. We are worshiping your house. We have a service in your house. And we about to have fellowship in your house. Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground, on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved. The house that cannot be shaken or bothered by nothing or anything. Father God, your word also tells us in the book of Matthew, verse 18 and 19, where two or more gather in your name. Hallelujah. There you are in the midst of things. So, Father God, I know right now for a fact that you're in the midst of our homes. I know that you're in the midst of our television sets, our telephones right now, our laptops right now, our desktops right now, our iPad right now, or whatever gadget we have, whatever gadget we're using, God, that we watch your service online right now. God, you have your way with us, God. You left us up right now today, God. Father God, I'm asking you to do a new thing in my sisters and my brothers and even my life right now today. Father God, we cast all our burdens, all our problems, all our anxieties on you right now today, God, because your word tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, God, that no one, that no one cares for us more than you, Jesus. So, Father God, we are casting everything to you right now today, Father God. Father God, you know exactly what we are going through. And, Father God, you know exactly what we are facing. Oh, God, we know that you're going to come through. We know that you're going to provide. Oh, Father God, we're here today to let you know that we are available for praise, that we are available for service. That we are available for the kingdom. That we are available right now today for us to continue to do our Father's will. That we are available to serve you, honor you, magnify you. That we are available for our assignment. That we are available for our mission. That we are available for our task. That we are available for our journey. That we are available, God, what you have called, chosen, and considered us to do. Father God, we came in for a reason today. Father God, we came in for a purpose today. God, we ain't leaving your house. Hallelujah. I said, God, we ain't leaving your house till we live it full and satisfied. Father God, we thank you for this. We thank you for this word that we're about to receive, this powerful anointing message, Father God, 
every destiny killer that's surrounding my brothers and my sister's life right now today shall die, shall be terminated and destroyed by the fire of Jesus Christ right now today. Father God, allow your love and your presence to move through this place right now today. Father God, you comfort us right now today and you watch over us. Father God, we lift these prayers up to you right now today, Jesus. Know that you're listening to them. Know that you heard them. So, Father God, we give you the thanks right now. We give you the praise right now. In Jesus' holy mighty name. Amen and amen. Because God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy. He is so worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm nothing without Jesus. But I know with him. I can do all things through Christ that give me strength. Yes, I'm here today to repent of our sins today. Yes, we dropped the ball today. Yes, we even made some mistakes today. Yes, we even fell short of God's grace and mercy today. We all do. We're not perfect at all. But one thing that God expects out of every last one of us to keep it real with him and be honest. He know what we did before we did it. He know what was going to happen before it happened. And you know what you did today, my sisters. You know what you did today, my brothers. Today is the day that you need to come clean. Today is the day that you need to go ahead and confess your sins to let them know. Amen? Amen. So, Heavenly Father God, I boldly and I'm asking your holy, precious, mighty name right now today. Please forgive me, my sisters, and my brothers for every anything God be done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me, my brothers and my sisters, for every anything God we done wrong, God, that was not right or set right in your heart today. Father God, please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every anything God that we participate in our mind, God, that it was not. I said, God, because it was not part of your Father's will. Purify us through your blood right now. Wash us clean right now today, Jesus. Clean us up as white as snow today, Jesus. Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sins. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a second chance. Thank you, Father God, for giving us another opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for hearing us out. And thank you, Father God, for keeping it right and keeping it clean with us today. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out. To give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Hallelujah. Oh, Heavenly Father God, this came thanking up for this awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I came thanking up for this word right now. I came thanking up for this anointing message right now. I just came thanking up, Father God, for the air that we was able to breathe right now. I just came thanking up, Father God, for your grace and your mercy right now. Our help and our strength right now. I came thanking up, Father God, for your words and your promises right now. I just came thanking up, Father God, for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on that table right now. The clothes and shoes that you have put on that back. I just came thanking up, Father God, for the angels. Angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now. I just can't thank the Father God for the Holy Spirit that is moving through us right now. I just can't thank the Father God because you're a man that you should not lie, that you stand in your words, that you stand in your promises. I just can't thank the Father God that we can always call, count, depend, rely on your holy name. I just can't thank the Father God because you're making a way out of no way. I just can't thank the Father God because you are a healer and you also are a provider. I just can't thank the Father God because you are moving mountains right now today on our behalf. And we don't even see it. We don't even realize it right now. I just can't thank the Father God because you always keep it real. You always got our back, God. Your word tell us in Hebrews 13 verse 5 that you'll never leave us or forsake us. I just can't thank the Father God for our blessing. I can't thank the for our breakthrough. I can't thank the for our anointing. I can't thank the for our deliverance. I can't thank the for our double portion. I can't thank the for our more than enough. I can't thank the for the open doors. I can't thank the Father God for the rain. I can't thank the for the connection. I can't thank the for the resources. I just can't thank the Father God for the harvest that we about to reap this year, this season, in the mighty name of Jesus. I just can't thank the Father God because we about to see the sunshine. I just can't thank the Father God because we about to make it to the other side. I just can't thank the Father God because the storm is over. I just can't thank the Father God because you about to show up and show out in our life. I just can't thank the Father God that you about to open up the floodgates of heaven and you about to pour out a blessing on my sisters, my brothers, even myself, God, that we can be able to receive it all. 
I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. I just can't I can't work. I just can't thank you enough, Father God, for who you are, what you have done. I just can't thank enough, Father God, because I'm in love with you, Jesus. I just can't thank enough, Father God, because I put my heart out to you every day, Jesus. I just can't thank enough, Father God, because I'm in love with you. I just can't thank enough, Father God, because you're my everything. I just can't thank enough, Father God, because you're my rock, my refuge, my salvation. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. Enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen, but let Jesus know that you cannot thank him enough. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about the word hope today. Because a lot of you right now today, you don't realize it's always hope. It's always hope. Where is hope? Hope is the equivalent to having faith. Faith is the equivalent of having hope. And as long as we have Jesus on our side, as long as we have Jesus right there with us, there's always hope, my brothers and my sisters. There's always hope, regardless of what the situation looks like. Regardless of what the circumstances look like, regardless how dark it looks, regardless if you have not seen any progress yet, Regardless of you have not seen it in the process, there's always, always hope. But one thing I know about hope, my brothers and my sisters, I know God is my hope. And as long as I got him, I know things are going to be all right. But God sent me here today, and he want me to share this word with his sons and his daughters. And I'm here to encourage somebody right now today, because a lot of you right now today, you are taking on situation all by yourself. And you thinking there's no hope. You you think there's never gonna your situation that you in that is never gonna is never gonna end. You are thinking that it's always gonna be that way. You think that you're always going to be in that same position. You're thinking that you're always going to be in that same situation. You're thinking that life had, was the end of it. But it's not. Another thing I realized. A lot of you right now today, you're too stubborn right now. You're too afraid to ask Jesus for help. You're too afraid to ask Jesus for help. And you know what you need help in. We all go through things and we all fight different types of battles. Some of us right now today, we are fighting an alcohol battle. And we think there's no hope. Some of us right now today, we are facing a, a, a drug battle. And we think there's no hope. Some of us right now today, we are facing prostitution battles, fornication battles, masturbation battles, idolatry battles, lying battles, cheating battles, deceiving battles. And you're still thinking there's no hope. Whatever it is that you are going through, whatever it is that you are facing right now, there is hope. I know how dark and painful it is. I've been there before. I've been there before. But when I got there, and I realized I was there, I ain't had to do but one thing. I had to call on the name Jesus. And when I called on his name, and he said, son, I've been waiting for you to call on my name. Right now, Jesus is saying right now, my daughter, I am waiting on you to call him my name. He is saying, son, right now, I am waiting on you to call my name. And all you got to say, Jesus, I can't do this by myself. Jesus, I cannot keep this alcohol disease by myself. Jesus, 
I cannot keep this prostitution thing going on by myself. Jesus, I can't do this by myself. I'm trying to quit smoking. I'm, I'm tired of lying. I'm tired of cheating. I'm tired of deceiving. I'm tired of being, being a liar. I'm tired of being, I'm tired of watching porn, porno things and I got to go to the bathroom and do what I got to do when I know it's not right. Jesus, I'm tired. Jesus, I can't do this no more. Jesus, I can't do it by myself. When you know you can't do it by yourself, that's when you know that you got to ask Jesus for help. When I was out there in them streets, I got I got tired. I didn't know how I was going to come out. I got tired of seeing people around me getting killed, getting shot, getting hurt, going to jail. And I kept asking myself, self, are you next? To the point of no return, I found myself in a gutter. And it was so dark. And I knew that was going to be it for me because I had done something wrong. And I knew I had done something wrong. And I knew the only person who was going to help me get out of that situation, but God's what I did. I called on him and I said, Jesus, I can't do this by myself. Jesus, I'm out here living wrong. Jesus, I need some help. Jesus, I know I have not been the right son to you lately. But Jesus, I'm here today to tell you I need some help. And I called on the name. And I said, Jesus, I can't do this no more. When I got tired of deceiving, when I got tired of selling drugs to my family and my friends, when I got tired of uh, uh, smoking marijuana and drinking, when I got tired of going to the club, when I got tired of sleeping with woman after woman after woman, I got tired. And I said, Jesus, got to be some hope in this. I said, Jesus, I can't do this no more. I said, Jesus, I can't do it by myself because in the beginning, I thought I was Jesus. In the beginning, I thought I can do it by myself. In the beginning, I thought I can handle it by myself. But what I'm more I thought, the more I was losing. And the more I thought, the more I was fading away. And when I fed, I was fading away so bad, I said, Jesus, I can't do this by myself. I can't do it by myself. And my father came right there to the rescue. And he helped me in the time of my life. He rescued me when I was in trouble. I mean, deep trouble. Because the enemy wanted to take me out. The goons, the goons wanted me gone. But my God said, no, there's hope for you, son. I have a plan for you, son. I have a future for you, son. A plan in the future that's going to hurt, that's going to help you and prosper you, not hurt you or even harm you. Right now, Jesus is saying, my daughter, I have a plan for you. Because he tells us that in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, he said, I have a plan for you. A plan that's going to help you in the pushing your purpose, not to hurt you or not to harm you. God is telling you right now that they say, my son, I have a plan for you. A plan that is not going to hurt you or harm you, but a plan that's going to it's going to um, help you and push you to your purpose. Do you, do you want to know what their plan is? The only way that you're going to know what their plan is, you got to stop being stubborn right now today. And you got to call out the name Jesus and say, Jesus, I can't do this by myself. I know you're tired of smoking crack all day long. I know you're tired of drinking. I know you're tired of selling your body. You're getting pimp by pimp by pimp by pimp. I know you're tired of lying. I know you're tired of deceiving. I know you're tired of watching pornographic things and you're doing things that you know that you shouldn't be doing as far as masturbation and you know that's a sin. I know that you're tired of being an idolatry. I know that you're tired of going to the clubs. You are tired of drinking. You are tired of doing the wrong things when you want to do the right thing. You are tired. You are tired of sleeping up under the bridge. You are tired of being lied on. You are tired of being cheated on. You are tired. Whatever it is that you are going through, whatever it is that you are facing, today is the day I want to encourage somebody right now today and say, Jesus, I can't do it by myself. Is that some hope? Somebody saying, Jesus, I've been fighting for my marriage way too long, but Jesus, I have not seen any progress yet. Jesus said, continue to fight because there's hope. Some of you probably tired of fighting for this job. You've been looking for a job. Don't give up on that job because Jesus said there's hope. A lot of you right now today, you've been fighting for a business deal. 
Geese, don't you dare give up because there is hope. A lot of you right now today, you are fighting for a ministry deal and you say you about to give up. Geese, don't give up yet because you only know how close you are because there is hope. But you got to say, Jesus, I can't do it by myself. I've been in this pain way too long. I've been in this race way too long. Jesus, I've been in this dark valley way too long. Jesus, I can't do it by myself. But one thing I know, hallelujah, when you call on the name Jesus, there is power in that name. There is blessing in that name. It is miracles in that name. It is breakthroughs in that name. It is open doors, hallelujah, in that name. And today is the day I want to encourage my brothers, my sisters right now today. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now, but I want to encourage you right now today. Say, Jesus, I can't do this by myself because there is hope. Don't you dare give up yet. Don't you dare throw in that town yet. I know that you've been fighting. I know that you've been fighting hard. I know it's been a battle. I know that your trials and your tribulations has been something else. But there's always, always hope. Because Jesus is your hope. Your only hope and your last hope. How I know? Let's read Psalms 119 and we're going to read verse 114. There's Psalms 119 and we're going to read verse 114. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You are my refuge, my shield. I have put my hope in your word. Do you see that? You are my refuge, my shield. I have put, once you put your hope mm, in his words, once you put your hope in his hands, it's always a way. Are you willing to tell Jesus right now today, say, Jesus, I can't do this by myself no more. I need some help. Jesus, is there hope in what I'm asking you for? Jesus, is there hope of what I'm believing in? Jesus, is there hope of what I'm trusting in? Like I said before, hope is the equivalent of having faith. Faith is the equivalent of having hope. You got to know it before you see it. You got to say, I know I'm going to keep this alcohol addiction. I know for a fact I'm going to keep this crack addiction. I know for a fact I'm going to keep this marijuana addiction. I know I'm going to keep this selling drugs addiction, carrying guns addiction, going to the club addiction. I'm going to keep this prostitution addiction. I'm going to keep this masturbation addiction. I'm going to keep this lying this, the, um, addiction. I'm going to keep this cheating addiction. I'm going to keep whatever it is I'm going through, what I'm facing, and I'm tired of going through it. I'm going to kick it. I'm going to kick it. I'm going to kick it because I have hope. I might not see my wife and I or my husband and I getting back together but as long as I have hope, I know I will reconcile back with my wife and my husband. I know I will have children. I might not see the business deals, but I know the business deals are there. I might not see the open doors, but I know the doors are there. I might not see that new job that I've been applying for, but I know the job right now today is waiting to call me right now. I might not see the ministry deals right now, but I know the ministry, ministry deals are there. I might not see the connection. I might not I see the resources, but I know, I know from the bottom of my heart that the connection and the resources, I see the harvest right there because I have hope. And the more that I have hope, and I put my hope in Jesus' hands, and the longer I put my hope in Jesus' words, it's going to be all right. But I'm here today to say, Jesus, I can't do it by myself. I need your help. And Jesus is telling me to tell you right now today, my child, I will help you. Because I am your hope. That's all you need is me. The point I'm making right now today to tell somebody. And as long as you have hope. And you know Jesus is your hope. And your only hope. He will never fail you. He will never disappoint you. He will never break your heart. He will never leave you or forsake you. But you got to tell yourself right now today. Say Jesus. I can't do this by myself. I need your help. Are you willing? To open up your mouth right now today and let the God that we serve, the God that we worship, help you right now today. And whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you're facing, let Jesus know right now, you know who you are. There's no need to be ashamed 
That's another thing a lot of y'all worried about. You're ashamed to ask God for help. You can't expect Jesus to do something if you're not willing to open up your mouth. Today is the day I want to encourage somebody. I don't care if it's only one person. I want to encourage you right now today. Open up your mouth. He already know what you're going through. He already know what, you, what you're facing. He just waiting on you to ask that question and say, Jesus, I can't do it by myself. I cannot do this by myself. I need you because Jesus, you are my hope. He's going to tell you right now today, my daughter, my son, I'm going to help you. Do you believe that Jesus is going to help you? Because I believe it and I declare it and I prophesy it right now today that Jesus is about to help my brothers and my sisters in whatever area they are going through, whatever area they are facing, whatever area they are struggling in, because I know that Jesus is my hope. And I know that Jesus is my hope. He is your hope. And he's a man. He's a man that he should not lie. He's a man that always stands on his words. Do you believe it? I believe you do. And if this word is for you, give God some thanks right now in the house. Give God some praise right now in the house. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today by us praying this simple little prayer that God is already working everything down in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, or leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always put your faith and your trust and hope in him. Because Jesus is your hope and your only hope, my brothers and sisters. Continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer will help and prayer will change things. I'm here today to let you know, my brothers and sisters. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all guys in prayer. I just ask y'all guys to continue to keep me in prayer. And keep me lifted up to this seven minutes LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' holy mighty name, God bless you. There is hope. Amen.